Hi everyone, Greg Russ with you for a brand new season of the KTM Summer Grill here at speedcafe.com. We have got some great guests coming your way in the weeks ahead and we're going to start with an absolute headline act. Congratulations to the Supercars champion, the Bathurst champion, Shane Van Gisbergen. Great to have you with us. Welcome. Thanks for having me. What a year. H how do you kind of frame that in, in your mind? The dominance, the amount of race wins you had, very special, Shane. Yeah, it's still sinking in a bit, um, but yeah, it's been amazing. Like supercars has been awesome all year and the mid season, especially to the end was super strong. So yeah, I don't know. We, we had such a year of change in the team with the engineer, the ownership and uh, how it all worked out and got better and better through the year was great. Just um, elaborate on a little bit, a little bit if you can, because naturally when someone like a Jamie Wincup comes in, they put their own mark yep. on things what's it like working with him in that capacity and what is he like as a as a leader he's been awesome he spent the first sort of six months just there i think taking it in uh, he obviously left the team in a pretty good spot but um now he's sort of putting his influence and his touch like the building looks so nice workshop is great downstairs and it's such a cool place at the moment the vibe in the team is awesome and you know when you're having fun you're doing well so exactly it's been a cool place to be a part of now, tell me about Adelaide, because it looked epic from a spectator standpoint, but from your your view, I mean, it was like everyone went crazy for the last day of school, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, I had a shock of myself both days, and um, yeah, just, but I was up and down the leaderboard like a yo-yo, but I had so much fun, and I guess the event was awesome, like, so good to finally have that back, and what a place to finish off the year, so I think it's going to be awesome in years to come. When you look back on it, you, yep. I mean, you took on the number one and it was the last thing for Holden. Yep. Did that play on you a little bit? I mean, you, you know, the significance yep. of that, wanting to do such a good job and, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I probably relaxed too much. It's amazing, like, how your brain changes when the pressure's off, you know. From the, I don't know, I probably didn't uh, didn't do the best I could, but, I don't know, the burnout made up for it, well, I guess. Uh, but that, that's my next question. I mean, look, let's look at the other glass half full stuff. The year was mega, Bathurst and the championship and so on. Yep. Lots of questions about the burnout. Uh, can it get any better than that? Uh, could could you have improved on that burnout? Oh, probably. Yeah, there's probably some things. I need to keep something in the back pocket for the next one to keep making it better. But um, oh, it was good fun. I, I'm glad I didn't think about it more before I did it because I wouldn't have done it. There were so many things that could have gone wrong. <laughs> but it was epic. And in the moment, like the crowd and being on top of the roof while it's still going. And how the heck did you do that, mate? What was the trick? What was the trick? Oh, I cooked my boot behind the brake and did you? wedged it in there. No. <laughs> the first time I did it, I went hard on the limiter. So <laughs> panicking, trying to move it back a bit. And then it was just above idle. It was perfect. Awesome. Can we, while we're having a bit of fun here on, yep. on your year, real standout for um, many of the, of the readers and viewers was your foray into rally going to New Zealand and, and doing that off the back of some events there and one here in, in Australia. Yep. Um, how special was that? Did it exceed what you thought you would even possibly achieve? Um, yeah, yes and no. Like, I always wanted to try rally. And since the WRC was going back there, I just wanted to be involved. So getting to do those, the Asia, uh, sorry, the Australian Championship in Canberra and then a couple in New Zealand that um, I did the Far North and then the Hawke's Bay where you landed in the chopper and pulled me out of the trees. Um, yeah, it's just been awesome to experience that. And it's an amazing sport rally, like the way the fans can travel around all the stages we're running it with in a chopper or a mm -hmm. car to the next stage. And it's just a crazy event. And then the relationship you build with your co-driver and your team, like your co-driver rides the wave with you and he's with you all week while you're learning the roads and riding your pace. So it's like, it's a proper team sport. and. You know, those top rally drivers are amazing. So I'd love to do more, keep getting better. Well, that was my next question. I mean, yep. we, we, within the schedule of things in, in 23 and perhaps even beyond, is there room for that? Can you do some more? So it looks good. I think four out of the six in New Zealand are free and I think it's three out of the five in Australia. So Excellent. Hopefully I can make it work and raise some money and go do it. Yeah, I'd love to keep trying to get better and and keep up with the Harry Bates and the Hayden Paddens of the world. Now you have got a tick, a green light to do a little bit of sprint car yeah. stuff too. Tell us about yeah. that. Now you're excited about it. I am. Yeah. Cause I did a midget race. So I, I did that end of 2020 and I got my ass kicked and, um, <laughs> all week I was just fuming at myself or just thinking about it, how to get better and go better the next week and get in the pack. Cause I was like, I was, you know, hanging out the back and, um, 
yeah, Artie he saw some pictures of me and I didn't quite fit in the seat properly. My shoulders were above the seat and he saw me in a in a pile up, I think, and said no more. So um yeah, but in a sprint car, Jamie's driven it himself and you know, they're a bit safer, a bit more cushion in the roof, a bit more space in the cockpit. Got a full carbon seat and everything, so doing everything I can and um yeah, I'm just I know I'm gonna be at the back again, but at least this time I'll have some chances to get better. I love challenging myself and I want to try to be half competitive by the end of it and then probably next year go better again. Enjoy that. Um, yep. Little Birdie tells us that you have your old Formula Ford. Maybe you and your dad are yep. restoring that. Tell us about that and how far down the track you are with it. Yeah, so dad ran a Formula Ford for a year. He bought a couple of Formula Fords. One was my old one and we ran some young kids in it and gave them some experience. And then now that he's learned about the car again, he's rebuilding that with a couple of friends. So Excellent. it'd be great to put that back into the livery it had and yeah, put that in the shed somewhere because that was a great year. The bookend to the, the Gen 2 chapter was um, fabulous for you and for the team with a, with a title and Bathurst and, and so on. We're now moving into a, to a new phase. And I know you've spoken a, about that. As we get closer, do you feel a little more enthused or is it a case of you want to just time will tell for you? What is it? Yeah, time will tell. It's not that I'm lacking enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Like the challenge of a new car and, and making it go as fast as possible, that's that's what I thrive for. It's going yeah. to be awesome. But I just hope that the car is all they say it is, you know, is speaking about how it's good for racing and um, how yeah. all this kind of stuff. I, I don't know. They're speaking a lot about it and I've tried to, you know, just separate from it. But... I really hope it's a good thing. I really hope it's awesome. Um, but yeah, we haven't tested it yet. So no one knows the answer and I can't sell something I don't know about yet. Fair enough. It would be great in the CV to have won in Gen 2 and in Gen 3. And I know you would love the, the notion of that, yeah. of course. For me, it's not about winning though. I want it to be awesome. And even if I'm having good battles and not winning to start with, I'll, I'll love that because it's the challenge of getting better. But mm. I want it to be good for everyone. Cool. Final one. We have a bit of downtime over summer. We've talked about sprint cars and things like yeah. that. But but do you get away and shut off from from racing for a while? Racing is downtime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What does that surprise me that you'd say yeah. that? I got, you know, a lot of speedway plan, motorbike riding again, and then a couple of derby races. It's going to be a bit of fun. Good on you. Congratulations on a Thank super you. super year, Shane. And uh, thanks for stopping by and chatting with us on the KTM Summer Grill. There he is, the series champion. We wish him well for season 2023 and make sure you check back in speedcafe.com tomorrow for another special guest. As a part of this year's Summer Grill, our great partner in KTM each week has a special prize pack to give away, which includes a stool, a stubby holder and a KTM hat. Very cool additions for your man cave, your garage or just for around the barbecue. To enter, all you've got to do is head to speedcafe.com or click on the link description below and you could be in the running. And check out, of course, tomorrow's next edition of the KTM Summer Grill right here at speedcafe.com.